Hey guys, so I wasn't going to talk about this until like a few days later. I've just still been reading on this and thinking about this and seeing kind of what my stance is on the whole scenario. But if you're unaware, there is a writer's strike that's been going on for a number of weeks. And now actors are part of this, their own strike as well. So it's a SAG after strike. And we've got a Writers Guild of America strike happening at, at the same time. This hasn't happened for, uh, for a long, long time at the same time. Last time the actors went on strike was 1980. I believe writers went on strike last in 2007, somewhere around there. And I'm torn, <laughs> I'm torn on both. I've loved movies. I've loved the whole industry for a long time. There's aspects of it that I've gotten a little bit out of hand and crazy as of late, but um, I've always been just drawn to the industry, the entertainment industry, especially acting. Did a lot of acting uh, as a kid and as a teenager and a little bit as an adult, um, like short films and things of that nature and some background work on some major motion pictures. Uh, so I've always loved aspects of just what could be a Hollywood life, you know, to a degree. For those that don't live there, it's like we just dream of it and we think of different things and we always hear little tidbits here and there. But when it comes to the strike, there's aspects of it there like, okay, well, what, what can people do? What can they not do? Um, what all is happening? What are the main issues that they're striking? You know, the writers and now the actors. And uh, what's, what's the big deal? So I wanna kinda of talk about that a little bit today. But in the comments, I want you guys to tell me, what do you know about the strike? Is it affecting you if you're an actor or an actress, if you're in the industry in any way, background actor, work behind the scenes, whatever the case, is it affecting you? Uh, and just overall, what are your thoughts? But well, biggest thing that is kind of happening with all this is it's all down to residuals for writers and for actors, and then also AI. AI is playing a big part in a lot of this. Obviously, if you haven't used it before, ChatGBT is, is huge. A lot of people are using that. And uh, it's one of those things where, hey, you just put kind of some ideas in the system and it just writes out whatever you're looking for to write. So a lot of people are using it to write scripts. Uh, I've done it once a couple of times. I like to test it out. It's pretty amazing. And there's also the aspect of AI using your likeness in different things. Is it good yet? No. As far as what we've seen so far, no, not really. You can always tell when you see it. it doesn't do hands well. Faces, it can do okay. Uh, but there's aspects to AI that uh, where it could get really good really fast. The camera I'm using is AI uh, powered to a degree. Like it, it knows to use AI to follow my face if I'm moving around. I won't do that right now. I don't want to give you motion sickness, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's showing up in so many different areas in a big way at a rapid pace. And, uh, but I don't think that it all started like with chat GPT or, or with, you know, cameras like these and things like that. It's, it's kind of started a little bit ago and uh, we'll talk about that as well. So I was reading the Hollywood Reporter and there was one thing, big thing I didn't know from this. I saw it on TV too. But in one of their articles, it says uh, on July 13th, SAG after led by President Fran Drescher, the nanny. I, I had no idea. Uh, called the union's first strike against film and television companies in 43 years, combined with Hollywood writers ongoing strike, the work stoppage applying to 160,000 members from actors to singers to dancers marks the first simultaneous strike by the two unions since 1960 and a sign of an industry in tumult. So obviously we know there's a lot of things going on with Hollywood, just it's good or bad, depending on your view and depending on how close you are to it. There's a lot of movies that have been coming out that haven't been making the money you would expect it to make, especially, you know, post COVID. And uh, that, that, it, that alone has already kind of changed the landscape of the industry. We're seeing a lot more things on streaming and that is also taking a toll on what actors and writers especially make based on residuals. There's a really good video on YouTube called How Streaming Caused the Writer's Strike by Vox, V-O-X, um, that really breaks down why the writers went on strike. Check that out, put the link in the description below. But it really breaks down very well, like how they used to be paid and how they've been paid now based on streaming with their residuals. When TV first began, there was a big strike in 1960 and that strike resulted in writers getting residuals. They get like pennies on a dollar almost in comparison to how it used to be, especially if you were writing for a major network television show. If you wrote for Friends or Seinfeld, these shows that are on all the time. Every single time it's used, you get a check. The number of runs your show has, the size of the check decreases. The show is generating income for NBC Universal, 
And so you will see some of that income. Now streaming has kind of changed the way that that all goes about and they're not making as much money as they used to. And that's the biggest reason why they went on strike, but AI was also a part of that. Now streaming comes in and there's a terrible formula based on a percentage of the sale from the studio to the streamer. So it sits on the platform for a year and you get one check no matter how many times it's watched. Do you write a show for Hulu? It's a, you get paid to write it and you might see $400 for the next three years, as opposed to a network rerun, which might be for an hour show might be $24,000. It just changes kind of the landscape of all that. And so I understand the pay differential and how they're trying to get better uh, improvements there. That makes sense. But I also feel like the actors and the writers, like as far as, you know, from a guild or a, or a union perspective, there could be other things that these these people are doing or these actors are doing, you know, with their production companies, trying to make a better uh, way of life for the people that work for them. Why is everyone continuing to just work through the union? I, and, and maybe I, I might be missing something there. I'm not sure. This is more just a rant. I, I don't, I'm not going to act like I know all that's going on here. I just know there needs to be a big change within the industry anyway, because certain things just don't make sense. Why have it all go through this one group? where you also try to include non-union members because you're like, hey, do, do you wanna be a member one day, possibly? Then you can't you know, promote this upcoming movie or TV show. You can't interview this actor or actress because they're not gonna do it anyway because they can't talk about it. Uh, it's like, so it puts this weird area where it's like, if, and if you're not talking about this in a positive way, you're not supporting the writers or the actors. Again, I appreciate what they do for their work. Really, at the end of the day, it does not affect me. <laughs> I mean, really, it just doesn't. And for most people, it doesn't affect us. It doesn't affect like what you can watch and when new new products or new shows uh, or movies will come out. Yeah, and for some of us, it'll be like, oh, we'll be sad. But there's so much stuff out there to watch and catch up on. It's, it's okay. But then you think of like the influencers. How are influencers hit with this? Because then I didn't know that like there's influencers, there's cosplayers that are also part of SAG-AFTRA, which I had no idea was the case. But you think of those, and I don't know if like these people are in here or not, but I think of the ones that I watch. Like, I think of the Greggs, the Johns, the Coys, the, the Cosmic Wonders, the, the, the new rock stars of the world, uh, the Omni Media. Like, where, <laughs> like, how does it affect those people that maybe one day want to be part of, you know, SAG-AFTRA if they're not already? Um, and they start to, you know, promote these things or do, uh, do uh, uh, reactions or reviews to, you know, like the next... Secret Invasion episode, does that does that affect it? Now, I've read that apparently it should not. You can still review stuff. Uh, that's a whole different contract when it comes to like journalism. That's not part of this as far as the, the writer's strike or the, the SAG after strike. There's many different unions for different things. Speaking of which, like actors, they can now technically do theater work. This is mainly for TV and film contracts with SAG after. It doesn't affect doing live theater work. So. There's still different areas where they can still work. They just can't do any TV shows or movies as far as major motion pictures because that would be considered struck work and you're, you're more or less kind of crossing the picket lines in that case. So it's really weird. Like, it's really weird. I was thinking about that earlier. Like, okay, can can people that maybe, like if I one day want to be part of sag after but I start to do stuff on upcoming projects uh, as far as like talking about them or reviewing them, does that affect that? Will they be like, no, we saw this. We got a link here. You did this. Apparently it does not. But then there's also that part of like, oh, you should, you should, you know, in solidarity, talk about the sag after stuff in a good way and do this and that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, there's that too. And again, I support that side of it, but I also support the need for change. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm in the middle, really. I'm kind of torn. I think one thing that kind of started it though, just from the aspect of like how, if you didn't know, there was talk of an executive saying, hey, let's get our background actors, let's let's you know scan their likeness and use AI so that we can use them in perpetuity, pay them a one-time fee, and then we can just use them whenever we want in whatever we want, in any capacity. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. I, I'm not surprised it was put out there, but it's insane. But one thing I think that that kind of came from was the volume. Yeah, the volume, which was on uh, used on uh, Star Wars and Mandalorian, it was used in filming the Batman with Robert Pattinson, Matt Reeves is the Batman. And, uh, and and that just shows like, you really don't have to go anywhere to film these movies, but you could easily put different things in the background, people, objects, whatever. And if they were to use AI for that, you would use the volume and it'd be really easy to shoot a whole movie without going anywhere. It's like a whole different version of, you know, a studio backlot. Um, you could just be in one room the whole time, but you look like you're going to many different locations 
to film a TV show or a film. And that those that movie, The Batman, and that show, The Mandalorian, really showed the capability of that because that there's a lot of moments where I'm like, oh yeah, that's they're somewhere like in the desert, you know, shooting this. And no, they were just in a building with a bunch of screens surrounding them and, and above them, and they were just in the building. That's all it was. So when it comes to new inventions and things like that, it's like I see how AI is scary because it leads to more tech being involved to create movies and needing less people, meaning less money you have to pay out and more money you're recouping as long as the stuff is good. And uh, so yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of where it started with the volume, maybe even before that, but the volume was such a big thing and it would make it so much easier to make movies if they had, uh, in TV shows, if they were just to scan people and use them how they want, would we really know the difference? To a degree, I think yes, but as AI gets better and better, each and every day it's a little scary what you think you know you might be seeing is not ai at some point like right now we can tell if you watch the the intro for uh secret invasion marvel secret invasion with samuel jackson it's clear that that's ai it's like it's so clear like right now we can just tell but it's going to get to a place where we won't really be able to tell and that's a little bit of the scary part a little bit kind of cool because I, I mean i, I do kind of like that stuff <laughs> there's aspects of it that i think are actually pretty dope but, uh, but there are aspects of it that are scary. So again, I do support the actors and the, and the actresses and the writers that are going through this, but also the background performers, also uh, those that are behind the scenes, grips, you know, janitors of these places. Like who, who, if you're involved with SAG in any way, I do support your fight. At the same time, there needs to be a different way, a, a, a better way of going at all this within the industry. I think you do need the union when it comes to just making sure that the work environments are uh, are, are being uh, handled properly, that people are safe, all that jazz, that people have health care, pensions, and all that kind of stuff, whatever the case, they need to be supported in that way. I get that. Uh, but there also is a better way it could be done from these actors that are making the huge bucks and have their own production companies. They could be doing something of more note uh, to kind of uh, either offset this or just make it an even better situation where maybe the union's just not involved at all. It just kind of disbands and we have something brand new. Because at the end of the day, the studios are gonna need these actors and actresses. They still will, which is what that is. We're not going to full CGI, you know, movies and TV shows. That's just not gonna happen. So <laughs> they're gonna come to some type of agreement, but uh, it's gonna be, it sounds like it's gonna be a long fight. It sounds like it's gonna be a long fight. You got these uh, studios saying they're, they're ready for a, for a long drawn out uh, strike. Like they're okay with this. And I think that part sucks. But again, should we expect anything less from big corporations? Absolutely not. Uh, that's the part that's uh, that's not surprising at all. So again, comments below. Let me know your thoughts just on the whole aspect of the strike for the WGA, also for SAG-AFTRA. What are your thoughts on it? Again, if you're in the industry, is it affecting you? In what ways is it affecting you? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate what you guys have to say and then you might teach me something when it comes to this i'm still reading a lot of different things on it but uh it's definitely an interesting time that we're in with a lot of these movies now being put on hold and and indefinitely put on hold in some cases so time will tell we'll see how it all kind of pans out and where this leads to next thanks for watching appreciate you guys if you want to see more as far as reactions or whatnot check out the videos i got here for you and other than that i will see you guys on the next video take care